Good evening, everyone, and welcome to DC Public Schools Parent University. I'm Natalie Treadgold from the DCPS Family Engagement Team, um, and I'm so glad that you've joined us this evening for this Parent University on Canvas. Um, our parent university is uh, based on the belief that families are our most important partners in their child's academic success. Um, and as a district, our role in that partnership is to share information, resources, and support that families need in order to play that role. So uh, I'm going to kick us off and share a little bit of housekeeping information. Um, then we'll hear a few words from our chancellor, uh, Louis D. Farabee, um, and then we'll kick it over to Sakan Kia from our Canvas team here, who's going to um, share some information with you about Canvas and then also walk through a demo. So coming up, we have a lot of great other parent university topics on the horizon, um, especially focused on information that families need in order to start off the year of virtual learning successfully. Um, you can find out more information and sign up for future sessions using the link at the bottom um, that one of my colleagues is going to post in the chat as well. For those that need subtitles, um, there, that is an option. Um, you select the gear at the bottom right hand corner of your screen um, and then choose the language preference um, that you'd like to view captions or subtitles in. We are using Microsoft Teams um, and we are using the question and answer feature um, to address some of your questions. Um, so uh, we ask you to please um, share questions that you have. Um, we have a great team on the back end here who are going to answer as many questions as they possibly can. Um, we have lots of folks on this call, which is really exciting. Um, and um, so our, our friends are going to try and answer as many questions as possible. Um, many of you may have the same questions, so we'd love if you use that thumbs up to upvote other people's questions that you um, also are curious about um, so we can know what to prioritize answering. Um, we may also answer questions that are really um, specific to your unique situation privately um, and make sure to keep an eye out for um, what other people are asking in the uh, Q&A box. Our goal is that Parent University is a welcoming, transparent and safe space for everyone here. Um, so we do have a few agreements that we like to keep to, um, assuming the best intention of others, um, of the folks on this side and also of your, the other families that are attending this call. Um, going hard on ideas and not on people. Um, so we you know your role as parents is to push us really hard to uh, make sure we're doing the best we can for your kids. Um, and finally, accept non-closure. So um, we're really uh, focused on answering as much as we can about Canvas tonight, um, but we won't be able to answer every single question or get to every single, single topic. Um, so we'll be sharing some contact information at the end of this presentation um, where we welcome you to reach out if you'd like to continue the conversation. So without further ado, um, I am pleased to introduce our Chancellor, um, Louis D. Faraby, to share a few words. Good evening. Thank you for the introduction. It's my honor to greet you this evening and express my gratitude for all of our parents and guardians and family members who have tuned in. You should know that these sessions that we've organized around our parent university opportunity uh, is geared towards meeting the needs that you have outlined for us. We heard from many of our stakeholders in the spring and the summer and over 17,000 staff, students and family members provided us feedback either through surveys or through focus groups or other means to help us prepare for a strong opening to the 2021 school year. And our parent university sessions reflect what you said you want more information on. And we have a series of sessions that we've outlined tonight between August and mid-September designed to not only help families navigate learning at home, but also ensure that we build a connection between home and school as we're starting the school year in a remote posture. Please know that we are extending to families and we hope that you extend to us as well much grace and patience as we work through uncharted territory. Think about it. We haven't started a school year with all of our students learning at home before. While we know that this is unprecedented territory, we also know that it's true is that you are very invested in your child's success as we are as well. 
Please know that we'll continue to be partners in learning throughout this time period. I want you to know the three themes that we're working from that we heard from you. And the first theme is we need to continue to prioritize health and safety. And the district is committed to robust health and safety protocols to protect our students and staff. We also heard that we want you to know that we are maximizing learning at home and learning at school time. We heard from families that students need to be engaged, they need consistent schedules and as much live instruction as possible, which is reflected in our plans for the 2021 school year. And then finally, we heard that we need to continue to operate from a rich lens of equity and prioritizing needs of students based on their backgrounds, uh, their experiences, knowing that students have various needs and we will meet you where you are. Please know that we'll continue to operate from these principles uh, throughout the 2021 school year and we look forward to continuing to partner with you in the days ahead. On the 11 days before the start of school, we're excited that you're tuned in to learn more about Canvas, which is our learning platform that gives you access to all of the curriculum resources that students and families will need to start the school year. To share more about our Canvas platform, I'm proud to introduce our Director of Education Technology, Sakan Key, and Sakan will take you through our information and how we're prepared for the school year. And it's my pleasure again to turn it over to you, Sakan, at this time. Thank you, Chancellor Fairby. Good evening, families. Welcome to Canvas 101. Um, I want to thank you again for your partnership in ensuring our students continue learning even when it can't happen in person. Next slide, Natalie. <laughs> So just an overview of this this evening, um, we're going to talk about what is Canvas, the features that our students will be interacting with, how, how, the, how they can access Canvas. I will walk you through logging in, the Canvas dashboard, how they will navigate through their learning activities. And then finally, I will end with a demo experience. I will show you a sample elementary Canvas course, as well as a secondary um, Canvas course. So let's jump in. What is Canvas? So we value um, your feedback from the last couple of months of our of, of having one platform for students to go to for their curriculum. And if you and Canvas is not a new platform for it for us. We've had it for about six years and we have a number of uh, middle and high schools that are expert users in Canvas. So Canvas is our one stop shop where students will go to learn online. In Canvas, students can participate in learning activities and discussions. They can submit their assignments and classwork, as well as it integrates with other tech tools and platforms that students work with regularly. And it's all in one place, so students don't have to keep logging into different places. So I'm just going to talk about some of the Canvas features that our students will interact with. One of my favorite features is the immersive reader. So on every Canvas page, students um, who need support with reading or translation um, with the text, they can click, um, and I'll show you guys in the demo, the immersive reader button, and that will read text out loud to them. Um, students can get announcements from their teachers right within their courses. Um, like I said, assignments can be uploaded right into Canvas. I will walk you through the calendar feature that will help our students to be organized with their learning activities, um, et cetera. And um, last but not least, we've been using our video conferencing teams um, for the past few months. And the, and the great thing about that is that students can actually uh, log into their Teams meeting straight from Canvas. So let's talk about how our students will access Canvas. So there's three ways. Um, the first way, if, if your student has a DCPS device, um, there will be a Canvas icon on the device on their desktop when they log into their laptop, they should see a Canvas icon. They just click on the icon and it'll carry them to the 
login page. If they do not have a DCPS device, this is the URL that they will put into the address bar, which is the dcps.instructor.com. And then last but not least, there is an awesome Canvas student app. So if your student is on a go or has a mobile or tablet, um, they can download the student app um, within their app store and they'll be able to uh, continue on with their learning activities from the app. And last but not least, I'm going to add on the app part that there is a Canvas parent app. Um, we will be releasing that soon. So communication will be going out to parents soon regarding on how to access the parent app so that you will be able to see what your wonderful students are doing within their classes. So now I'm going to walk you through the basics of Canvas, um, navigating through learning activities, logging in, etc. So this is the uh, page that students will see once they type in the URL or click on the Canvas icon. So they're going to put in their Office 365, DCPS Office 365 credentials to log in. And if your student does not know their credentials, please reach out to their schools to provide that information for them. So this is a Canvas dashboard. So once the student has gone past that, um, login screen, they will come to this dashboard. And as you can see, there's two uh, red markings around it. So the first is the tile view. So when a student comes in, they'll click dashboard and they'll see all of their classes in this card view. Um, for elementary students, they will only see one card because all of their uh, subject area classes will be grouped in one class, but students in grade six through 12 will see a variety of cards depending on how many classes they take within a semester. Um, on number two, if you look on the right hand side, um, you see to do coming up and recent feedback. To do gives students a list of all of their assignments or discussions that they would they need to work on. It gives them the, the amount of points that it's worth as well as the date that it's due, keeps them organized. And then coming up gives them a heads up of any activities that is coming up um, related to their classes. And then if ever a teacher was to give feedback on an assignment or any type of learning activity, students will see that information as well on the lower left hand side called recent feedback. So this is just a snapshot of what you might see when you has learning activities progress throughout the year um, when a student logs into um, Canvas. One more thing, um, I, you, if you see the little icons below on the cards, that alerts students to let them know that they either have <clears throat> an assignment coming up or their teacher has made an announcement or there's a discussion that they need to look on. So if your student sees icons at the bottom of the card, make sure to have them click on it to see what that important message might be. So now we're going to get into the meal, I would like to say. So what you're looking at right now are two different home pages or landing pages. So once a student clicks on a card, it brings them to their courses. On the left hand side, you will see a second grade. This is what the elementary um, example will look like. Um, we did have an English and Spanish version. Um, so the top button, if Natalie, if you could go to the the next slide to show the elementary. So this is a closer look. So the top button will be for students will click on that to have live instruction with their teacher and I'll show you a demo of what that might look like. And then on the bottom, you see the content area buttons, math, ELA, social studies, science, etc. Students will click on those buttons for independent learning. So, so anything that has to do with live instruction from their teacher, they'll click on the day of the week and then anything that has to do with independent learning that they will do on their own, um, they will click on the content area below in the square box to access that. And then our secondary friends in grades six through 12, they're uh, 
home landing page looks completely different because our friends in grades 6 through 12, they have various uh, classes throughout their school year. So this is an example of a sixth grade ELA um, home page. So if you have a sixth through 12th grader, each of their home pages will look different for each of their content areas. So this is the welcome page. Um, students will click on modules to see exactly what their work is for the week. Um, and then they'll uh, click on announcements to, to see what announcements is made from their classes. Um, so this model is a little bit more independent um, compared to the elementary. So now we're going to talk about how students will navigate once they're in a, on a Canvas page. So for independent learning, for every Canvas page that a student is clicking through, and I'll show you guys in the demo as well, at the bottom of the page, there are two navigation buttons. If a student clicks the previous button, it'll take them back to the previous um, page when they click the next button and moves them on within the learning process. So those two navigation buttons are going to be very helpful as a student is navigating um, their independent learning in Canvas. And then last but not least, um, grades. So anytime a teacher grades an assignment in Canvas, whether it's an assignment, a quiz, a discussion, et cetera, students will always have access to see um, how well they did on an assignment. And during the semester, students will use Canvas to access feedback on their learning in the form of rubrics, comments, peer feedback, and grades for individual assignments. And um, so Canvas is not the official gradebook. Um, so parents and students will still have to access grades from Aspen, but they can always click on the grade link within their students within the students course to just see how well they've done on assignments. And then last but not least, Canvas support. So when I log in and I'll show you this on the menu bar at the very bottom, there's a question mark. So if a student clicked on that question mark, there's actually support within Canvas that can happen. So number one, they can send a message to their teacher for more support through that question mark button. Two, um, Canvas also has parent guides and student guides um, to help students navigate some of the features in Canvas. So that's where those guides will live under help. Um, for DCPS support, we will be providing um, resources on Canvas on the Reopen Strong site, as well as continue to um, provide resources on the DCPS Instructional Continuity Plan site for families. So those are the two options for um, Canvas support. And I will pause here for any questions. Yeah, thanks, Takan. That was um, a lot of great information and the question and answer um, box is blowing up. Um, so I picked out a couple that um, seem to come up pretty frequently here. So one, um, a lot of questions about te Microsoft Teams and Canvas. Um, how are students using those two platforms differently um, and how are they working together? Perfect. So Microsoft Teams will continue to be the platform we use for live instruction. So what a teacher would do is they would schedule their live instruction in Canvas and um, in Canvas. So there's a button actually in Canvas, a Teams button in Canvas where a teacher will schedule live instruction. And then um, that once they schedule that, it'll go to their students course. Students will click on the link and I'll show you in the demo an example. Students will click on the Teams meeting link and it'll take them directly into Teams so that they can um, interact with their teachers live. So that's how they actually work together and then that's how we're using Teams. So a student does not have to separately log into Teams to access a meeting like they did a few months ago. Teachers will go ahead and schedule live instruction right inside of Teams and all the student has to do is just click on the Teams meeting link and it'll take them right to their live instruction. Great and then also does that mean that um, uh, storing assignments and getting feedback from teachers will not be happening in Teams that'll all be in Canvas? It will all be in Canvas. Yep. Great. Um, we're getting a lot of other questions about what grade levels are using Canvas. So um, can you just speak to that a little bit? 
So um, Canvas is K through 12. Um, some grades, the younger grades will probably modify their use of how they use it, but it's it's get grades K through 12. So we've had a lot of um, we've had a lot of wonderful um, educators and teachers and content team members over the summer that have worked really hard to digitize our curriculum and and build it into Canvas. Um, so we're excited about um, all that is to come, but it's K through 12, which will probably be, be modified a little bit in the lower grades, but it's K through 12. Great. And for any um, pre-K families we have on this call, we had a great um, parent university session um, last week with um, Cheryl Olson from the Early Childhood Education Office. Um, and she shared a lot of information specific to the uh, pre-K um, curriculum and how students will access learning there. So um, highly encourage you to view that recording and we can place a link in the chat to where um, you can access it. Um, so let's see, let's do one more question. Um, can you talk about which educational apps students will have free access to um, this fall? Um, like in general, so we have, we, we do have, we will have that, or we probably do have the app information on the parent facing site, but just offhand, every DCPS, uh, student has access to Office 365, um, Play Posit, um, Brain Pop. Certain students will have access to Lexia, but we have a we will have a full running list on the parent site that'll be grade specific as well. Great. But we have certain tools that every um, DCPS student has access to, and that's Office 365, that's Canvas, that's Play Posit. Um, smart learning suite, et cetera. Great, thanks, Sakan. Um, so I think now um, we're gonna go ahead and, and do the demonstration. Yes, yeah, so I will share my screen. Oh, so Natalie, you have to click allow. Okay. And then I'll share. All right. So I'm on the Canvas login page and I'm going to sign in as a demo student for tonight so that you will see the student view. Uh-oh. Hold on one second. K12.dc. If you can just bear with me one second, this login. Okay, Natalie, if we could just pause for one second. Let me check out what's going on with my login. I'm going to stop sharing. Hold on one second.
We'll just take this time and catch up on some of the questions that we have in the Q&A. Um, and yeah. we are running a little bit ahead of schedule, so we oh, should perfect. be able to wrap up on time. I'm more than happy to answer questions while I am troubleshooting this login. So um, here's a question. We had a question about um, tech support and a ticketing system. So um, will there be a mass ticketing system um, so that DCPS can track IT issues um, for our students and families? We will have a, um, a large ticketing system that we are in the works of um, developing right now with our partners at Octo. So the answer is yes. Um, and maybe, I don't know, Donna or Sakan, if you want to answer this one. We've also gotten a few questions about um, Clever versus Canvas, and will students still be using Clever? Um, and if so, how? Yes, um, students will still be using Clever, and I'm finally logged in. <laughs> Students will still be using um, Clever. The difference between Clever and Canvas is Clever houses all of our blended learning software. So like your reading applications or your math instructional games and learning activities. Um, Clever is the one stop shop. So students are not typing in different URLs to access those software. And the beauty is um, students can actually click on the Clever links within Canvas. So yes, we will still be using Clever. And so I think I can um, go ahead and start with the demo. Let me know if you are ready, um, Natalie. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. So I finally logged in. So this is a demo student account. And um, <clears throat> there are a couple of courses already on here. I'm going to walk you through every piece of this um, system, so at least that you're familiar with it. Um, up here is the DCPS dome. So anytime you hit this DCPS dome, it brings you back to this dashboard interface um, for students. When you click this, this is the student's profile. They can change their picture. Um, as well as if they click this link, they can get a QR, a QR code that they can scan once they download the once they download the student app and it'll bring them straight to their course. So anytime a student clicks dashboard, they will get the card view of their courses. Um, to me, this is a better view. Um, versus the list view when they click on courses because the list view gets gives them text where the card view gives them a visual of everything that's happening in their course. And as you can see here on some of the class cards, there's already announcements, um, discussions um, that the demo student has to check. Um, so this card view um, to me is, I would recommend it for students to use and they will access this by just clicking on um, the dashboard feature. So if uh, if a teacher would if a teacher puts the students in any groups, um, they will click on this icon right here to locate that. The icon below groups is the calendar. I'm just going to click on calendar and the beauty about the calendar is it's already lists for students what's due when. Um, and then students also have the option to show the month view, the week view, the agenda view, which is a list. And as you can see, there are some assignments due. And then a, the student can create uh, their own events to keep them um, on track of their assignments as well by clicking the plus sign over here. Um, and then they can add other school events in there that their teacher already hasn't added for them. Below that calendar is the inbox. So um, teachers can send students messages as well as vice versa. And that is where students can find those. And then support is the last but not least icon on this global navigation. 
And like I said before, here you can find parent guides as well as student guides relating to Canvas. Um, students can ask their teachers questions, um, but for any type of like technical uh, Canvas support, um, <clears throat> make sure you check out that DCPS page so that you can find out which um, parties would be the right to contact for that. So this is the global navigation bar. Um, I've talked about the tiles with the classes. Um, this is one of my most favorite parts of Canvas is the to-do. So anytime there is an assignment um, or a discussion or something coming up that a student has to do, it's posted here on the side. And to access that assignment, students just have to click on it and it'll take them directly to the assignment. And it just keeps them organized and up to date um, on their assignments. And then below that, it gives them a heads up of, of what's coming up. And then um, if ever a teacher was to provide feedback on an assignment or a learning activity or discussion, it would appear below this um, uh, coming up. It'll say recent feedback. And then finally, students can click on grades to view um, grades that are in the course. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard. I'm going to click on elementary. So now I'm going to walk you through the an elementary uh, demo. So I'm going to click on elementary. You click on the card. It takes you directly to the course. I'm going to move this. Uh oh. So this is a sample elementary course. Like I stated before, um, when a student logs in, this is a second grade, they might, they'll see a, a message from their teacher. They might see a video. Um, to the left, there's another navigation bar. Some teachers might only have three links visible that are important that students will access all the time. When I show you the secondary shell, there's a lot more on the navigation bar. So um, this is the na course navigation bar. Um, on the right hand side, as you can see, the to do list follows. So for this particular second grade class, these are the assignments that the student has to complete. Um, the dates are there as well as the points. So like I stated in the presentation, all live instruction students will click on the day of the week to access. So I'm going to click on Monday. And students will get a chart. Um, the time, when it's going to happen, whether they're part of small group A, B, or C, the teacher will paste the Teams link here. And sorry about that, that you guys can't see the graphic part up here. But teachers will paste the team link here. So when a student clicks into when a student clips into Monday, for example, and let's say they are a part of group B at 10:20, they know to click this link. It'll take them directly into Teams. And then I'm going to click back on home. And that's for live instruction for an elementary student. For independent learning for an elementary student, they're just going to click on the content area. I'm going to click on ELA. It brings them to the home page, and this is a sample, so there's not much typed here. And then, as you see, at the bottom of the page are the navigation, previous and next. So I'm going to click next. It gives them a chart of their weekly activities that are coming up. I'm going to click next. And then this is just a sample of what um, the video is not going to show, but this is just an example of what a student might have to do with independent learning. Like for this one, it says watch Ms. Kia read our democracy answer the questions in the video. So Play Posit is one of our interactive video tools where teachers can create um, lessons where students can actually watch interactive videos and respond to them. So this is just an example of a sample learning page, independent learning activity page. And then next, it says end of the week. You've reached the end of the week. Congratulations. And then a student would just click back on home and then choose another content area to work on. 
So that is our elementary part. And Natalie, I think I'm going to pause for questions to see if anything's coming through for elementary before I go to secondary. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Um, I have a couple here teed up now. Um, so a question that's been coming up is, um, does do the DCPS issue devices automatically download the Canvas app? So the Canvas app is will work on a cell phone, a personal cell phone or like a personal iPad or personal tablet. So the Canvas app is only for like mobile devices. Got it. So otherwise, if they're using a laptop, they'll want to open the browser and um, and go to Canvas that way. Yes, yes. Got it. Um, a couple questions about how um, teachers and students will be trained and supported to use Canvas. Awesome. So <clears throat> teacher training before teachers left for um, summer break, we have a Canvas 101 course that teachers engaged in. Um, teachers are coming back on Monday, so we will have a variety of, of trainings for them. For students, um, we've built a Canvas 101 student course for secondary and elementary students. Um, elementary students will watch a Canvas 101 interactive video where secondary students will actually go through like a, a self-paced um, short little mini module where they will get to experience what their classes will be like. So yes, we have a uh, an abundance of resources to prepare our students and teachers for this exciting adventure. Great. Um, let's go hard ahead and um, keep moving forward for now, and then we'll pause awesome. again for questions in a little bit. Awesome. So I'm going to click my dome to take me home, and then I'm going to click on a secondary course. This is a chemistry course. I don't know if anybody out there loved chemistry. So as you see, it's <clears throat> It's different, so this is on um, the secondary course. On the course menu, as you can see, there's many more links for a student to interact with on that side. Um, on the right-hand side, there's still that to-do list to remind students of any activities or discussions or quizzes they need to engage in and in, in the due date. So there's the welcome page, an overview of the course. Um, unlike elementary, Elementary will be focusing on days of the week where secondary it's kind of more open. So secondary students will click on modules. Modules are how um, learning activities are organized and modules are organized in a linear fashion. So think of a module as a student's own personal workspace. So this is what a student might see, a secondary student. So I'm just going to click on properties content so students have to watch this video and then as you can see oh i forgot to show you guys this so on every canvas page there's the immersive reader i will go back to a page and the immersive reader i clicked on that it literally just reads all of the text on a page for you and um students can uh turn on parts of speech as well as their text preferences, making the text larger or smaller, um, changing the background. Um, students can also choose a language to translate their text into. I'm just going to choose a random language, Danish. And they can do it by the word or by the document, and then it changes it for you. Um, this is a phenomenal tool that uh canvas it, that's been integrated into canvas but it's also in all of our office 365 applications such as word um class notebook OneNote, etc so i just wanted to show that let me change <clears throat> the language back actually i'll just go back to original so immersive reader, and I talked about that feature earlier. So as you can see, <clears throat> the navigation buttons are the same. Student will click next and um, to access the next learning activity that's ahead. So there's so much um, that can happen in Canvas without a student having to leave and go to another site to access um, assignments and work. So I think that is 
it for the secondary part. I can pause to see if there are any questions regarding secondary. Um, Sakan, can you talk a little bit about the language um, accessibility of Canvas? Yeah, sure. So um, I'll go back to the module. So <clears throat> on every <clears throat> Canvas page, let me find something with some writing. On every Canvas page, there is well, this doesn't have much text. There is an immer the immersive reader tool. And so for our dual language, multi-language students, um, they can always click on an on the immersive reader tool if there's like text on a on a Canvas page. They'll click on the reading preference part and then choose which language, their native language. Um, I'm just gonna choose simplified Chinese. They can choose whether they want to translate by word or the whole document. And it translates for them. It also it reads, but I don't think the audio is going to play. I'm not sure if it's going to play because I didn't select audio. Were you able to hear that, Natalie? Uh, no, not from this end. Yeah, so it, it'll also read it to you um, as well. So that's that's <clears throat> the how the immersive reader supports our um, our dual language students as well as our students who need support with reading text. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we have a question about what it'll look like for kids to submit work. Um, and this is from a third grade parent, so if it's kind of a grade specific answer, um, if they'll be, you know, submitting uh, Word documents, taking photos. Um, yes, using <clears throat> submitting work is it's actually teacher specific, but um, it can happen. I'm just going to click on I'm back in the second grade elementary. I'm just going to click on a random assignment. Um, this is our living through history cornerstone we're all excited about so <clears throat> submitting work um, depends on what the teacher wants but it can all happen from canvas so if they have to type a word document um, they can submit it through canvas or if they have to do um, an assignment where they actually have to type in a text box within canvas that can happen there so <clears throat> essentially I mean, all, all of students' assignments can just go through Canvas. Canvas has the infrastructure for teachers to do that, so students are not um, going to 10 different places. So if students did have to submit pictures, it's all dependent upon how the teacher sets it up, but they can submit pictures through Canvas as well. Awesome. Um, let's uh, go ahead and um, move forward. I think those are the um, the main questions that we um, were seeing come up a lot in the Q&A. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to. That is all I'm going to give you back the. All right. Good screen. I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Back to you, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, we are in the final stretches here of our parent university for tonight. Um, we want to um, thank our families so much who joined us this evening, who asked so many great questions. Um, we'll continue to respond to um, the questions in the Q&A. Um, we'll also be um, sending out a recording of the session and the slides um, will be available on the Reopen Strong website. Um, Thank you so much to Khan for um, for walking us through that um, and for answering all of the questions. Um, like I said at the beginning, we have um, uh, a lot of great um, sessions coming up. 
Um, the next one on August 27th is um, going to be wonderful um, about helping children respond to tra trauma as we return to learning. Um, I know that this topic um, was really heavily requested by a lot of families um, and uh, we want to think about um, how we are supporting um, children holistically and so this session will be um, great for families to, to think about that. Um, we've got a lot of questions about how families can go back and view previous sessions. Um, they are all on YouTube um, and the link is here um, as well as in the Q&A box. So um, we know that uh, schedules are really crazy right now and it's really hard to make time um, to in the evenings to come and, and watch with us. So um, we would love for you to, to watch um, on the time that works best for you on YouTube. Um, just a final um, few pieces here. So um, again, uh, a lot of the information that we shared tonight, um, as well as additional resources are available on um, the Reopen Strong website. Um, that's dcpsreopenstrong.com. Um, and uh, the, that link will also be in the Q&A. Um, we'd love for um, you all to fill out a um, evaluation form to let us know how this session was for you and how we can continue to improve. Um, so you can um, you can fill out that form at the uh, bit.ly dot parent um, you eval 19 um, and that link will also be posted in the Q and a. Um, got a little too excited there. Um, uh, if your student needs a device, we had a lot of questions about um, DCBS issued devices versus personal devices. Um, please visit the survey. Um, and fill it out and let us know about your tech needs. We know that um, in order for successful learning at home, um, students need to be set up for success with devices and um, access to the internet. Um, and finally, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to parentu at k12.dc.gov. Um, if you have additional questions or thoughts or feedback that you wanna share, um, we're always um, excited to hear from you. Um, and so thank you everyone for joining us. Like I said, we'll continue to um, respond to as many questions as we can. Um, and we look forward to um, you joining us next time.